Welcome back to another episode of our Eagle Perspective podcast. I'm Mike Siciliano, Dean of Students of the Upper School. I am joined today by the one and only Dorcas and Dume. Hi. Dorcas, <laughs> thank you for being here. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to be here. I don't know that anyone has ever deserved this opportunity more. Let me start with that. So, <laughs> Thank you. So Thank just you. for people who don't know, you're currently a senior. Yes. You are graduating soon. Yep, which is insane to think about. It's happening so fast. Yeah, um, <laughs> it is insane because I remember when you were a freshman who just showed up. And oh that my. feels like yesterday. During COVID. <laughs> During COVID, the, the infamous red gold year. Woo! <laughs> that was quite something. Well, I am so glad to get to sit down with you because I think you've had one of the most amazing amazing and also unique journeys at Santa Fe. So we're going to we're going to talk a lot about your time here. Um, awesome. Yeah, so why don't you do a quick introduction of yourself just for anyone who doesn't know you, maybe when you started at Santa Fe and some of the things you've been involved in, which for you I know is a very long list. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'll keep it short, I'll keep it short. <laughs> so my name is Dorcas, just like you said, I am a senior this year. I came to Santa Fe Christian since freshman year. So this is basically my fourth year. It's been awesome. I am involved, like you said, in so many things, but to keep it short, I am a president of the BSU club here, Black Student Union Club, and I am part of the theater, I am part of other um, clubs such as service club, or the medical club, and women leadership club. Um, uh, what else? I think well, what sports have you played sports. during your time? I've played volleyball, I've done cheer, basketball, and a little bit of um, flag football. Okay. And, and then track and field. And then, okay, so only five sports. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then um, have you been a part of any of our global ministry trips? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I went to Rwanda in February, which was awesome. So we were there for like 18, 10 days, something yeah. like that. Okay. It was it was an amazing. It was okay. a life-changing thing. And then you are also going on another trip. I am also going on another trip, which I'm really looking forward to. We only have one week left. Yeah. So I'm going to France next week, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, yeah, that's going to be awesome. Okay. And then have you also represented Santa Fe at things around the country, maybe like a conference for female students? Yes. So there is, I'm involved with this outside of um, organization called Dot of Destiny and... I forgot the complete name, but this is a group of um, just young girls and um, female where we get to just talk about growing up as a, what is like being a woman, um, good influence in things you should be involved with. And I've talked about Santa Fe and how that has changed my life and how it's amazing being here. And just kind of like seeing, um, giving that perspective, like, hey, there's a variety of schools you can get involved with out there um, that could, you know, opportunities to get a great education and stuff like that. Awesome. And then you were also our representative at Girls State last year. Isn't Girls right? State. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, I, well, you thank do you so much. Me. I mean, I know it's hard <laughs> to keep it all straight. <laughs> yes, I did Girls State my junior year, mm -hmm. which was great and amazing. But um, just what it is, just having the opportunity to learn about politics, the U.S. history, um, and just running a mock government trial. So mm -hmm. you get to actually run mm -hmm. for um, things and campaign and all that. Yeah, stuff. and then that's only for juniors. Yes. But, but are you being invited back next year? I am. I just okay. got the email actually two days ago saying that they wanted me to go back and speak and just share my experience and how it was. Okay, and that happens for everybody that goes to Girls State. Something, but they only usually choose four people yeah. to come speak. Yeah, I was yes. being sarcastic. Oh, no, it's a very right. high honor. Of course, I'm not surprised, <laughs> Mrs. Liano. <laughs> You're not surprised that I'm sarcastic? Yes. Do I have a reputation for being sarcastic? Very much okay, so. Okay, excellent. I'd be very <laughs> disappointed if you'd said something different. So, okay, and then how many times were you on the homecoming court? Just twice. <laughs> Just twice, okay, which is the maximum amount of times you're allowed to be on the homecoming court. I'm pretty okay, sure. Okay, <laughs> yes, no, it is. I'm confirming that it is. All right, so I would say it's safe to say you have experienced as much of Santa Fe as anybody ever who's been through here. I mean, like, you really <laughs> dove in and were just like, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. Right? Safe to yeah. say? Okay. Yeah. I love it. Um, we're going to talk a lot about that. Okay. Um, but I, I want to hear first, and, and because you have an amazing story, uh, and I know it hasn't always felt that way. It's been a hard story. Um, but... I think for someone who were to just kind of look through the list of all your many accomplishments, mm -hmm. you know, it'd be like, oh, wow, wow high-flying kid. But it's pretty incredible, incredible when just because I know a little bit about your story. Mm -hmm. So let's start with, you know, uh, as a long way of getting to how did you get to Santa Fe, let's okay. start with where were you born and then how did you get to the United States? Sounds good. Starting from the bottom. Um, so I am originally from... 
Burundi. That is where I was born, but my parents are originally from Congo, DRC. Mm -hmm. And then they moved to Burundi, which is where most of my um, my siblings and I were born. And then from there, there was just so much going on. We had to um, just fly out. We had to, what is that called? The word. Uh, immigrate or you were a refugee? We had to evacuate. Evacuate. Okay. We had yes, to evacuate, evacuate. yes, um, and come here. So it was not really yeah. a choice we had. Can I ask a, what was going on? It was just a lot of political just issues, people dying. It's hard to say. Now I'm comfortable to say it because it was a long time ago. It's, yeah. it's in my past. Yeah. Um, but it was just hard just being nine years old then and just being able to see that like eye to eye. Um, still, it's still in my head. I can still remember that day. Um, we had to leave, but it was just not safe for my family and I, so we kind of just had to. Mm-hmm. And get you out. and you left on a day's notice. Yes. I mean, it, this wasn't like planned. It was no, like, it was not planned. No, we okay. had um, they just they gave us a few days, and we had to figure out the paperwork and stuff quickly to just make sure it was yeah um, all figured out to move. Okay, stop me if you don't want me to ask a question further okay. about it. Sounds um, good. But I mean, what was that like as a nine year old? I mean, what what happened? Your parents were just. Hey, we gotta go. And where did you go? And what was going through your head? Mm -hmm. When that happened, when my parents just sat us down in the living room and just told us about, hey, we actually have to move. We have to now stop packing. We gotta go. We have to stay somewhere before we leave, though. I'm like, what? This is crazy. Now I have to leave my friends behind, or the people I grew up with, the the culture. I'm like, where am I moving? Like, part of me was really excited, but part of me was also very scared because I didn't know what to expect. And I didn't know this is, is this really happening? And just keep questioning that in my head. I'm like, this yeah. is nuts. Um, but at the same time, I was really excited because I'm like, oh my gosh, I get to just go in, I get to, I get to go to America. Is this, am I dreaming? <laughs> like, please smack me. Yeah. Um, and it was, yeah, it was great. And so we got here and we, I, I did not speak English back then. I only knew Swahili and I was speaking French. Um, and so we had to learn English from literally how to say hi. I did not know what hi was. I learned it from uh, the, the airport, actually. You learned hi at the airport? Yes. Which, which airport? Where did you fly into? It was, um, what's it called? The, the airport here in San Diego. Oh, San Diego. Yes. Okay, so, so you went straight. New York, you went, okay, so you went New to New York. From New York to okay. here. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. Um. And so I started learning English, and then I moved, came to Santa Fe in 2021, right? Yes. 20, fall 2020. Fall 2020. Yeah, fall okay. 2020. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. But before then, I was going to a school um, called City Tree Christian School, mm-hmm. um, which is all just a middle school. And then from there, I was like trying to figure out where I wanted to go to school. I'm like, well, I don't really want to go to a public school, just so much going on. Um, I'm not sure if I'll get a better education there. I was just debating while I was praying so hard. And then somebody told me, oh, there's a school in Solana Beach called Santa Fe Christian. I'm like, okay, what's that about? But I don't know. I've never heard of Santa Fe Christian before. And then she brought me here. Her name actually is Janet Allen. Mm -hmm. So she brought me here. She had kids go through Santa Fe. She had a, yes. Yes. Her daughter, I think, graduated in 2017. Okay, yeah. Um, and then when we came here, I was, I saw the school, I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like I needed to be here. Like, oh my gosh, I want to come, I want to come here. What do I need to do? Um, and she was like, you have to go through this entire process because it's so far from where I lived. Um, it's like, you have to just do all this interview application. I'm like, wow, okay, it's okay. I just, I'm praying that I get in. Um, and so I was praying, did all this interview, the testing, the application. It was a very long process. I was so, I was stressing. I'm not going to lie. I was stressing. <laughs> But God really answered my prayer because I was more worried about about it being more private school and you have to pay um, yeah. to come here. So I was like, um, how's that going to be possible? And that was my main doubt. And But with that, it actually was a season for me that actually influenced my, my faith as well because it pushed me to actually trust in God and not knowing what's going to happen next. I was like, just bring, I'm like, if I don't get in, it's okay. But if I get in, that would be a miracle and just a dream come true because I see myself coming here. Um, And when I did, my mom actually pranked me. I got home. She was like, oh, they did not accept you. I'm like, what? (laughs) She's like, (laughs) she's like, well, I guess I'm going to a public school. That's okay. I'm okay with that. But then she's like, no, actually, yeah, there's this old, and then she showed me the letter, I got accepted, and I received all the, the stuff. I that did came not know that. this, and I have so much more respect for your mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Um, so it was, it was just, it was just amazing. So I've been blessed. My just 
just extremely blessed being your Santa Fe Christian, not even a joke. Yeah. Well, I do want to give a shout out to City Tree, your, yes. your former school, because we now have, you've brought over like four or five students yes. from City Tree behind you. <laughs> um, and that place seems amazing. Yes. Like I just know all of our students from City Tree are incredible young people, um, heart for the Lord. Uh, so, <laughs> so huge shout out over there. But that said, you show up first day here at Santa Fe. Woo! Yes. What like what are you thinking? Because it's uh, it's as much as as in in comparison to a lot of schools, we feel like the small school. It's a lot bigger than than City Tree. Yes, it's much bigger than City okay, Tree. Okay, yes. so so what was that like? I mean, you walked on campus freshman year. You didn't know anybody. <laughs> Nobody. Okay. Nobody. Completely just new environment, new everything. I'm just like, hey, am I gonna be okay here? Like, it felt welcoming. I'm not gonna lie. People were very welcoming. They're like, oh my gosh, we're so excited to have you here. This is an affair Christian school. This is what we do. I'm like, okay, all right. So this is great. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, I felt very just like, whoa. Yeah. Is this really happening? Mm -hmm. Am I really here? Am I going to be able to be involved in things? People going to like me? Just all these questions going through my head. Like, I mean, anybody as a freshman probably went through this um, for sure. But I was really excited about the same time. I was extremely just terrified and afraid because I did not know exactly what to expect. I'm just like, I'm just going to be in a classroom. Just that kid walking by. You know, nobody's going to like. But it's like, no, guy's actually with me. He brought me here for a reason because there's no... There's no reason for like me just getting accepted, being able to come here for if it wasn't for God. Like mm. he has, he has my back, and so just that hope um, was within me. And my parents just encouraged me. It's okay. You're gonna you're gonna do great. Just work in your education. You get involved. You're gonna be great. Like okay, all right. Um, <laughs> sure but, thing, mom and dad. Whatever. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but that's pretty, that's pretty much it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Unless there's anything. Else. You, you might not remember this. I actually remember meeting you. I think you came on one of like the group visit days. This was like, you would have been an eighth oh, grader. Wow. And I just remember you were sitting on a table like next to the stairs and you had your name tag on. It was like for kids who were interested in coming to Santa Fe. It's oh, probably wow. before you even got in. And you recall and a lot. I totally I'm remember this. this. Yeah, <laughs> because you were like, "Yeah, I go to City Tree," and I was like, "Huh, I don't know if we've had any kids from City Tree before." Like that's why that's why it stands out to me. Oh my god! And goodness. which, of course, now whenever the City Tree applicants come in, I'm like, "Let's take that kid." <laughs> yeah. So you've you've paved the way. Thank um, you. Thank you. Uh, and clearly, any of your fears about you know will they like me and will I were have have totally been unfounded given you know how how successful and and beloved that, mm-hmm. that you've become here um you've mentioned a lot about faith already has faith been in your family from the beginning is that something that that came later have were, you, were your parents believers from the time of your birth or yes okay. yes so um my parents have been Christians as long as I lived at least. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but they've influenced my faith, but I did not accept Christ until my eighth grade year, actually. Okay. Yeah. So I got baptized right before my freshman year. That's when I personally accepted Christ. And ever since, it's just been, it's been a journey. Yeah. It's been quite a journey. But yes, my parents have been Christian and they've been believers. They've really influenced my faith um, and just my life stuff like that. Yeah. So how has both your faith and yourself, how have you grown during your time here at Santa Fe? I mean, what are some of the things you look back at that freshman year Dorcas and compare yourself to now? And you're just like, wow, I've really grown a lot. Wow. Well, first is my confidence because my confidence then I would say it was, it was pretty low. Um, I was just so self-conscious. I was in my head all the time. I was just like, I'm not going to get along here. I'm not going to make any friends. Um, like, I was looking forward to getting to know God, but at the same time, like, just having so many doubts. I mean, that's a human thing, I guess. Mm-hmm. But I would say now I'm, like, more confident, I'm more talkative, more communicative, and I have the heart to want to be able to help people to go through that journey that I went to, but being able to just, like, tell them, hey, I went through this, and it's okay to go through that. And just, like, this is some of the ways that I faced it. This is some of the ways I, w- I went over. This is some of the ways I f- um, I came over my fears and my anxieties. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, you've been involved in so much. Yes. Why have you chosen that particular route? I mean, mm-hmm. like, why have you chosen to just jump in and, tr- and try things? Okay. One is actually, it takes a lot of people because people are just, it's, it's funny. When there's something going on, people want to convince you to try something. <laughs> but it's like, do I, am I really going to like it? No, maybe not. I don't know. Do I really want to try, you know? And then 
Claire Bassett was actually one of my biggest influence, especially when it comes to theater. And she's just, she's, she's amazing. Shout out she to Claire Bassett. She is amazing. Class of 2021. <laughs> amazing person. Yes. Um, and so she was, she, she, we just talked one time. We were just sitting on the um, lunch table and she was just telling me about her journey as well as Bella Reside as well. Mm-hmm. Um, telling me about things they've been involved with. And so I'm like, okay, that sounds amazing. And I'm like, this is kind of, you know, I look at the things that will really benefit me and things I'm actually interested in, things that will, you know, will help me grow, I'm like like service club or um, medical club and stuff like that. That was sort of one of the main things I was looking forward to. Yeah. I'm like, yes, you know, that's something I want to get involved with. And then sports has just kind of been within me. I'm like, I like, you know, staying fit. I like staying active. You're really fast. I'm quite fast. Yes, that's yeah. true. I'm not going to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so those are just things I love. It's not just about, oh, trying to do all these things to look good on college, which is great too. But I actually enjoy doing those things. Yeah. It just became part of who I am. It helps, it just helped me grow tremendously just in different perspective, different aspect, uh, aspect of my life. Yeah. Um, what are one or two of the best things that you've done here that you point to and you say, gosh, you know, I mean, I've done a lot of things, but these one or two things have really been transformative for me. One was me actually starting the BSU club Mm -hmm. because when I came as I wanted to get involved, um, one of the things I'm really involved with outside of school is just being involved in just acting and, you know, Black History Month um, activities and stuff like that. And so when I asked around um, the school about students that's been here about what they do for Black History Month, that was kind of one of my main questions. They're like, oh, we don't do anything. We've never had anything like that here. I'm like, oh, okay. I, I, okay, I guess so. I mean, it's a different culture. Um, and I'm like, okay, I, I don't know what to do then. I mean, I, I would want to have something like that because I think, it, you know, it's something people need to be a knowledge about, people need to learn about. And so I talked to one of my friends, Anaria Brown, who um, was in my grade mm-hmm. um, then, was freshman year. Um, I'm like, okay, what would you think if we started something like this? Like, would they be okay? Do you think this will get approved? She's like, I don't know, but let's try it. So that's when we started it. We just, um, I think we brought the idea up to you, Miss Rugi. And yeah, then we freshman, had, Dorcas, freshman Dorcas came into my office and sat down and you were like, I want to start this I club. I want to start this club. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, why do, why do I need to do? And it was after actually the black, um, sorry, the club fair it was after the yes club it was fair. after the club fair so yep. i was not sure how this was gonna go down and then just have to finish the constitution application why i wanted mm-hmm. to do this and during then too it was one of those seasons where we had a, ri- a lot of riots and just a lot of things going on in our environment and so it was i was a little bit scared because um i was like i don't want this to be influenced by that this is based on how we can just bring culture to the school being able to teach about mm-hmm. um you know, black history, teach about who I am because this, that is who I am. I want to be able to showcase that and be able to honor that. Um, and so I was able to just do all the interview and application process. And hey, now we're here. I mean, I would say <laughs> now the, we're here. the BSU has arrived. <laughs> I mean, like talk a little bit about some of the stuff you've done over the four years. And first of all, I do need to say thank you because when I look now at Black History Month and the ways that we've gotten to be engaged in that and the ways that, I mean, I have learned so many things through Mm it. Um, (laughs) It it really is largely because of you and your club. And um, now it's just part of the fabric of what we do. So thank you for bringing that. Yes. Um, But talk a little bit about how that's grown and and other things the BSU has done on campus that that have had impact. So each year, we just continue to grow. Each year it gets better. We've been involved in a lot of local charities, local organizations such as the Rescue Mission, Little Ministry, um, just being able to help people like that and being able to host forums here that teach about just how it's like being a minority, how it's like being black, how it's like um, just navigating through life. Um, a Santa Fe Christian School, but also just generally in life and culture and environment. Um, just being able to showcase the things that's going on around the world and being able to talk about that. It's just amazing. It's been really amazing. We've hosted a lot of events such as 
the Taste of Soul. I mean, that was it, just last it's, month. It's maybe the best club <laughs> event in the history of Santa Fe. So, what is Taste of Soul? So, Taste of Soul was an event where we were able to showcase food, um, music, dances, just a lot of um, inventors, people that just been overlooked, and being able to just put them on, um, display them. I um, mean, honor them and just being able to showcase them like, hey, we wouldn't have done this without you. You've done so many things. Why not showcase you? I um, mean, just I've been changed by that by come students' comments like, hey, this was actually amazing. Thank you for hosting them. Like, you know, that's really encouraging. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, it so. has been really encouraging. I think I loved this year as part of Black History Month an idea that you had, which, you know, because this isn't your first podcast now because we did <laughs> because you said, hey, we should do short kind of podcast clips where we answer common questions, maybe some uncomfortable questions. <laughs> and um, I, like, I think the first one we did, which you were in, was like, yes. so why do we celebrate Black History Month? And, yes. and um, we'll make those available. People can check them out. Yes. But I think for students who are trying to navigate this culture and lots of, lots of messages about race and how are we supposed to feel about this, it's very tense. You seem to have done an amazing job of – making that more personal for kids, both students of color and and our Caucasian students. Like, how do you do that to where everybody loves you, even though you're taking on these hard <laughs> topics that can sometimes be divisive? And I just feel like people are like, Dorcas helps me understand why it's important that I acknowledge this or I celebrate this. I mean, yes. what's that been like? It's been amazing. You have to really look at the bigger perspective. It's not just about the color of your skin. It's about building a community with your unique differences mm -hmm. and bring it together to learn from each other. And so putting it in that perspective makes it more comfortable for people, for people to be able to learn about and people to actually want to be more engaged in it. Um, but not just more informational, but also being able to host events such as Taste of Soul or yeah. um, just other events that we will do in the past. Mm. I can really recall Yeah, the music that one last the year. The music one yeah. where we were able to dance and we were able to yeah. um, bring somebody in to speak and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That brings more of our community. Like, hey, we have something going on. You can you, you, there's an opportunity for you to be able to learn and ask questions. Um, it's not just me talking to you all day, every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that, but here's also another opportunity for you to do that and just being able to um, pull Christ within that um, aspect, within the situation. Um, it's also just a great way for it to just be blessed and be, be able to just be more. Yeah engaging yeah one one of the ways i think that, that you guys have done a good job presenting this is you know listen god made us all in the image of god but he made us unique you know we all kind of represent some different pieces of him yes. and um having clubs like the bsu in those events has actually helped build more community and be exactly. more unifying exactly because we're celebrating all those different aspects yes. of god it's not about you know I'm this and only this. Exactly. It's, you know, yeah, there are some unique pieces about me because of this, but how do we make that unifying, unifying so exactly. we all understand yeah. each other? And I would say, like, my freshman year, sophomore year, there are always, like, a lot of questions. For example, people ask me about my hair. Like, mm -hmm. oh, how do you change your hair so fast? How do you get braids? Oh, my gosh, you have an afro and you should have braids? I'm like, yes. But now, um, like, back then it was a little bit uncomfortable one to answer but so for them to be able to ask that question because they don't want to sound offensive yeah but ever since we started the bsu club it's been just like hey wow i love your hair um it's just a normal conversation a natural conversation to have yeah that's not offensive but it's more like oh yeah that's what's up that's my hair exactly yeah um and there's no like fear in it when they're asking the question because we've built that community we've built that environment we've set the tone to be like hey it's, it's okay to ask questions yeah it's okay to want to know something that you're not sure about um and so that's kind of just kind of one of the highlights one of the important things that i really value within yeah. the club that i yeah run, i love run that run and i i'm gonna add to that i i see our students of color coming in now as freshmen and I think it's a lot more comfortable for them because of the culture that you guys have helped establish, but also just having a group that they know they can plug into right away yeah. for some of that stuff that feels a little weird at first when you're in the <laughs> minority and, you know, you're like, I don't know if everybody understands this piece of my culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you, you guys have really played a pretty key role there. So again, I'm, I'm going to say thank you like seven times. <laughs> um, hey, all so, glory to God. Honestly, yeah, I honestly, it. I love it. Um, 
Okay. What else? Something else that you've been involved in here. You know, you've been involved in a lot of sports. Um, yes. You know, I, I know you recently got back from a trip. In yes. fact, in fact, let's talk about that. I don't know okay. if that's what you're going to pick, but I'm going to make <laughs> you talk about it. Um, let's do it. Because that also has been a unique journey for you. And I think it's, I, I'm going to be honest, it's been hard for me mm. because, I mean, why don't you share a little bit? You were supposed to go on a trip a year and a half ago, almost at this yeah. point. I mean, what, so yeah. what happened? Share, share for the audience. Um, so like I said, when we just going to go, you know, yeah, get back a little mm-hmm. bit. When we came here, we came with documents. Yep. It wasn't, wasn't really quite passport. So a lot of people face that, but, um, once you become a citizen, there you have a, you need to have your citizenship certificates. And yes. for us, it just took, it was a very long process mm-hmm. and it was a very stressful process. Which, which you just to fill in some gaps from people who may not be following you, you became a citizen how long ago? So this was during COVID. Okay. So you came, you came here like and you, right you, ha- you, you immigrated here, you had documents to be here, but then you had to wait a certain amount of time before you could be citizen. Yes. You did that. You went through that whole process. Yes. Okay. And then, um, we had basically a month for the citizenship certificate to arrive, but it took two years for it to arrive. And so yeah. I had to miss on on certain trips, um, so because of that. And we put you on two trips. Yes. And the first one, and, and the whole time it was waiting for waiting for the right, you, to get your passport, you needed like six documents. Yes. And you had five of them. Yes. And you were waiting for this one document. The one document that they really needed for, yes, the passport to be issued. Yeah. Because I could not apply if I did not have those, that, that, yeah. that one particular yeah. document. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, it was, it was heartbreaking. Yeah. I mean, and I would imagine for you. I mean, like, how hard was that? Because you you wore it well, right? I didn't see you breaking down, <laughs> but I'm sure that happened. Like, that had to have happened, right? I mean, what was yeah. that like? You're you're watching all these other kids, you know, just go on these trips who have had their passports since birth. Mm-hmm. It had to have been tough. No, it was. It was. I was. Yeah, I would get home. I would get so excited to talk about it with my parents. They're like, oh my gosh, that's really exciting. And then my dad just did this back and forth, going to office to office, yeah. trying to make sure there's a way for us to expedite this process. Um, there wasn't really anything we could do except to just wait. Um, and it was, it was just heartbreaking. I'm like, Lord, is this really happening? Like, why is this happening to me? Like, nobody else has to face this. Yeah. Um, and so I'm like, Lord, I just need strength right now. It's, it's really discouraging. Like, I'm getting a little bit emotional about this too right now. That's okay. Sorry. I'm um, not trying to okay. make it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, like, why is this happening? I just want to do that. I just want to go to a trip. I haven't been really out of the country ever since I immigrated here. Yeah. I just want to visit a different country. just want to do your work, um, being able to influence people, being able to talk to people. But I don't know how this is going to happen. I'm all, I only have one more year till I graduate. I mean, we're going to be able to just travel at all. Yeah. Um, and I kept on praying and praying. I'm like, Lord, please answer my prayer. Please answer my prayer. Lord, back and forth, this, this, and that. I'm like, look, guys, please keep me in prayer. It's crazy. It's a harder process than it looks like. Um, and so it's quite a journey. But then when God finally answered my prayer, oh my God, I'm about to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I was in my car alone. I was screaming. I was like, thank you, Jesus. This is really happening. Woo, sorry. <laughs> no, don't be sorry. It's good. It's real. Yeah. It's real. Um, I was just like, this is really happening. It was basically two weeks before we went to Rwanda when I got my passport. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Dorcas, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I, I may have shed a tear or two on that too. You know, we had all those moments of, I don't know if you remember, we tried to find organizations that we'd have those phone calls with of like, you know, hey, can you, all the immigration yeah. groups, can you help get this girl a passport? Yeah. And, yeah. Um, I remember coming from, it was the senior trip, um, when they called me, I got that was I was not expecting that call. It was just anonymous call. I'm like, okay, who's calling me at this point? I was coming back from the senior retreat, and I and she was like, oh yeah, you can come in and get your certificates. I'm like, what? And then I started the process of the passport application. I did that, and then well, in December we were supposed to come, it didn't arrive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was just like, oh, it got lost. We couldn't, we couldn't find your passport. And I'm like, what? I only have a few weeks to my trip. This is really, this is really, this is stressful. I can, I don't know what to do. What am I supposed to do now? It's lost. Um, and so I just kept on calling. I was spending like hours just calling these people and it's really hard to reach them, which is so annoying. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's like two hours for them to just answer one call. Um, but God was just in that process. It's just been amazing. Just gave me strength, the courage and just the perseverance to be able to go through that. 
and it was just not it was not for nothing he had a purpose for me to just wait but also learn how to just trust him in the uncertainty in the things that i don't know when it's gonna happen how it's gonna happen is this really gonna happen i'm just like lord it's all up to you now it's all in your hand i can't control this um and then i just kept him calling and then when i finally got the call saying hey you have an emergency um what's it called appointment mm-hmm. to come and just get your passport we can figure this out and I was there for literally eight hours. I missed yeah. school that day. Remember, yeah. I called you. Yeah, that you're morning. like, you're like, would it would it be okay if I miss? I'm like, I will drive you there. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. stay as long as you need it's to crazy. stay. So I yeah. waited there for eight hours. I'm just waiting in the office. I was yeah. the last person just left and just sitting with myself in the entire room, the entire office. And they kept calling back and forth. I'm like, is this gonna happen? Am I gonna get my passport today? And he finally got in my hand. I was like, whoa. Yeah. I cried. I'm like, this is crazy. And then I send that selfie. Like, yeah, it was that. so good. I love that picture. I shared that picture with our whole staff. I mean, <laughs> the whole, whole group that was praying for you. Yeah. Um, thank you so you much know. for that. Oh, listen, <laughs> we owe you a lot more thank yous than you owe. So, so you got to go. I finally got to go to Rwanda um, last month, and it was just an amazing. It was it was like a rediscovery. It was like coming back to my past, living back to where I came from. Like, wow, this is this is really where I belong. Like, I not that I like I don't belong here, but just I felt it felt like I was home again. Mm-hmm. It felt like I was able to reconnect my roots. Um, and it was, it was just an amazing experience, and I was really blessed to have gone to that. Because at first I applied to Israel, but then Israel couldn't happen. Oh, yeah, I forgot and about then- that part of it, too. <laughs> yeah, so we're finally like, okay, you can go on a, on a trip, and you're like, oh, I'm going to do Israel. Yes. And then literally the day after we we announced the Israel team was when the, co- the current the, yeah. conflict started. started, yeah. And so then you ended up going to get on a Rwanda No team. regrets in that yeah. changing. God yeah, has his plans. Out. Yeah. And so I was able to go to Rwanda. It was, wow, 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 wow. It, w- it was just amazing. One thing I wanted to highlight was that I was able to reconnect with my uncle. <laughs> so this so is an absolutely crazy story. It was so unexpected. So, and you had no idea that he was no, there. No, absolutely no clue. Yeah. I was there. I was just like, hey, I'm expecting people to just speak English. You know, I, I can't speak in my language because, you know, it's just, it's an English speaking um, country. Yeah. And wow, well, my accent doesn't really say the same. And so once they heard my accent, they're like, you're not, you you don't, you speak a different language, don't you? I'm like, well, <laughs> I guess, yeah. <laughs> um, but then with that, uh, it was just being able, great to use my language again in a different, just whole, outside yeah, no, You know family. a lot of languages, so I'm going to ask a silly <laughs> question. Which language? So growing up, I learned Kirundi, French, and Kiswahili. Okay, sorry, say that a little bit slower. Sorry, I speak so fast. <laughs> no, it's okay. So growing up, I learned Kirundi from Burundi, okay. French, and mm-hmm. Kiswahili. Okay. Kirundi, I did not really use as much after I left, and mm-hmm. so that one I completely forgot. But right now, I still know Swahili and French, which we still use in my family right now. Um, and so like I was saying... That was the language I was able to speak with them and be able to connect with them like that. Okay. But then... So English is your fourth language. English is my fourth language, and I was learning Spanish, too. Yeah, you're learning Spanish here. In middle school. Oh, in middle school? Yes. Okay. Did we make you take a language? You took French? I did French, yes. Okay, all right. Yes, I wanted to, yeah, just keep up with French. I took French. Okay. Um, But yes, that was the language part, but the one with my uncle was just two days after we landed, I got a call from my father saying, oh, actually... There is someone there that I used to know <laughs> <laughs> that I taught with when we were younger. He's now living in Kigali Christian wow. School. Yeah. Um, in Niki City of Kigali, but uh, he taught at school at Christian School as well. There, he's like, "Oh yeah, you should go. You guys should meet. You guys should just talk and catch up." I'm like, "Are you serious? There's somebody you know that lives here. How much of a coincidence is that?" And so that was just like, that was just crazy being able to connect back. Um, and he was just telling me all these stories when I was young. I'm like, I don't remember any of that. What? Uh, but it's being able crazy. to catch up with him, being able to talk, I'm just like, wow. Yeah. There, is no, there is no way I was expecting all this to happen in a yeah, trip. That's wild. <laughs> it was that's crazy. Wild. Dorcas, I don't know how you've shouldered so much of this. And you have been <laughs> such a light here. I mean, there's like, I mean, you have this fan club. <laughs> and and I know you've been carrying this. I mean, what is it that has allowed you to 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 be someone who in some ways has such a unique story and is shouldering more than most of our other students and yet be such a magnet for their for them um and such a leader. How have you been able to do that? Jesus, period. Hmm. Like that sounds so easy to say. That sounds like, yeah, of course you of course, it's Jesus, but what has he done? He's done so many things. 
so many things. It's just, it's, it's just been quite something, the hills and valleys, but he's been there. The days where I thought he wasn't, he doesn't see me, he doesn't hear my prayers, he was still there. Um, but obviously, beside Jesus, all the support system that I had, the community, the Santa Fe Christian just came to my life and be like, like hey, we got you too. Mm -hmm. We're able to help you with this journey, you're not alone. Being able to have that reassurance was really encouraging. And just being able to see that, it's like, wow, why wouldn't I want to do that for somebody else? Why not? <laughs> Um, like God bless me with this, why not bless somebody else with the same experience, with the same aspect, like somebody's struggling, like, wow, I faced this, I got you, I can, I can help you with that, this is how I faced it, and this is the solution that I, you know, this is a solution, a, a solution that we, we can, um, present in to try to overcome whatever you be, you might be facing, um, so, yeah. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask you a question that, uh, I think most seniors don't like getting. <laughs> so if you don't know, that's okay. Okay. Do you have any sense for after Santa Fe, what's going to happen next? I am, again, still praying about that, but one of my, a school that I really wanted to go to was Liberty Christian mm -hmm. School, which is in Virginia. It's, yes, across the country. Yeah. But um, just the environment, the education they have, the expectation and standard has really influenced me. And I know a couple people that went there mm -hmm. and still go there, like Kate Phillips, for yeah. example, and Kylie, Kylie Kenner. Kennard. Yeah. Um, and just being able to hear from their experience right now, currently, um, it's just been a great encouraging just aspect to hear like, hey, okay, it might be far. It might be a completely just new, different environments, new states, far from family. But it will help me grow. It will help me mm -hmm. just prepare my uh, prepare me for my journey, prepare me for my future. And I'm just really looking forward to that. I don't know how that's going to look like. I'm still trying to figure things out every single day, making decisions that well affects me one way or another. But I'm 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 looking toward forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Dorcas, wherever you go, whether <laughs> it's you know college or beyond and beyond, um, <laughs> they're getting an amazing person. So I, I will just say, again, on our behalf, I think lots of students come here and benefit from Santa Fe. I mean, I think honestly, I've, I've been lucky to benefit from a lot of this place and other students come and leave an impact. I, I, I mean, I don't know of anyone who has come and made us better in the same way that you have. So truly like it's been our honor and thank you for choosing Santa Fe. I've, I've been blessed. I've, I've, I'm the one who's blessed here. I don't know. I don't think so. Did you hear what I just said? I don't think so. I mean. <laughs> well, um, thank you. We're, thank we're you. lucky to have had you and, and we're here for you uh, onward. And thanks for coming on the on the podcast here and just sharing about your thank experience. Thank you for having and, me. Um, thanks for putting up with my questions that, <laughs> you know, brought some emotion. But yes. we appreciate that authenticity. Hey, so, it's reality. It's real. It's reality. Yes. That's right. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks to those of you who are listening and watching as well. If this is your first time joining our Eagle Perspective podcast, uh, we've got lots of other episodes with students, alumni, some of our faculty, some outside guests, you name it. Uh, we'd love to have you check them out. You can find our other episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, elsewhere podcasts are available. You can watch the video podcasts on YouTube. Hope to see you again soon.